All right, what's going on? This is Eric from the Eric Tries Too Hard podcast and all that other stuff. Uh, this is the second mock draft I'm doing for this year. I'm going to do 12. Uh, currently, just to timestamp this, we are pre preseason. This is the week before the preseason. I'm doing a total of 12 of these drafts. Four of them are going to be this week. I'll do four next week and four the week after that, which is when people start drafting. Uh, so I think a player who gets injured in the next two weeks, uh, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> or I do. It's fun to go back and forth on this shit. Uh, anyway, uh, this will be interesting because uh, I had a crab feast today. Uh, I ate 23 crabs, and this is uh, uh, 12 or 13 beers. So <laughs> we'll see uh, if I stay awake through the whole thing. I'm sure I will. Anyway, uh, the last one I did, which is the first one for this season... Um, and if this is the first one you're hearing of this, uh, if you watched my videos last year, my draft videos, thank you very much. I appreciated it. A bunch of people did. Uh, I was really floored by that. That's really cool. I hope it helps some people out. Um, but just for anyone who's never watched one of these, I'm not ever claiming to be an expert in picking football players, uh, but I am very good at strategy, especially in uh, fantasy football. Uh, all these are 12-team PPR mock drafts. Uh, so listen to the strategies involved as far as setting a lineup and, and picking a lineup for the full year. Uh, but if you disagree with a player choice or if your league is formatted differently and you would have picked a different player where I picked whoever, uh, just substitute it there. This is more about the strategy than anything else. Um, I probably had another point, but I can't remember. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, so I'll be doing these three at a time. Uh, for the next four weeks, that's right. Uh, and so each time I'll pick a different one from a different position from the first four, the middle four, the last four. And the last one I did was the first pick. This time it's the tenth pick. Um, I'll do another one this week, somewhere between fourth and, and seventh, or no, fifth and eighth. And then the next week I'll, you know, find new positions from those places. I think it's less about which pick you have uh, and more about which third of the draft you're in. This year, it's a little weird because, like, the first three picks tend to be so much stronger than every other pick, especially in a PPR league. Uh, but either way, it, it, you can just adjust it as you go. All right. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that I should do. Then, ah, fuck. Early on, I should do a fourth pick, fourth round, whatever. Anyway. All right, so who went off the board? So Antonio Brown is normal. Ezekiel Elliott jumping up above all the other wide receivers going up. Odell Beckham Jr. and Julio Jones, all by Le'Veon Bell. Now, between the uh, Ezekiel Elliott and Le'Veon Bell picks, I'm assuming either some of the people in this draft, everyone seems to be here, auto-drafting, um, either have very good feelings about them, are willing to take the risk on potential injury and potential four-game suspension, or they're just, they don't keep up with <laughs> fantasy as much. Oh, and... Typically, when I you know pick my rankings and look at through tiers, I like the uh, Boris Chen tiers along with uh, beer sheets. Um, but again, this is about more strategy. Um, as I found this year in particular, the strategies really come into play. Like early on, you can have a game plan going in, but it's the middle four rounds that determine your full-on yearly year strategy for this draft, and then the rounds after that, like rounds like nine plus, uh, tend to be the ones where you're like, you have to really like commit to the strategy and observe other people. Oh, oh no. so pick five is Le'Veon Bell. That's something I've been monitoring because I like to get D'Angelo Williams because I, I go wide receiver heavy, especially in PPR formats. I tend to wait on quarterbacks and tight ends unless I get great value. God, these are all things that when I said them last year felt like few people were saying them. Now that's just like the common advice. Son of a bitch. I, I have a theory, and I talked about this on a podcast I did with an SB Nation writer that I did last year where we talked just every week. We talked about various aspects of fantasy football strategy. Um, I'll get back to that in a minute. All right, so here's what we got. Deandre Hopkins, Avery Johnson. So, damn it. <laughs> I want to grab A.J. Green. I think he's better than he's going this year. Uh, Devonta Freeman, running back, is a very it's a it's a scarce position. Diz Bryant, I actually like AJ Green more than Diz Bryant this year. I know it's not the sexy pick. Um, Omar Miller, I actually really like. Right, so this is a D. I'm gonna get somebody decent. Um, 
Uh, Gronk as well. You know what I think? Here's why I'm going to take Gronk. I never really, I only take when I can value. But I'm taking Gronk because I see uh, two running backs. There's four picks between me. I see two running backs and three, maybe even four uh, wide receivers who I'll be happy to have in the second round. But Gronk is not coming back to me. One of those other four might. And having two of them in Gronk would be okay. Um, I don't usually take a tight end that early. But uh, with the 10th pick, Gronkowski, that's, that's not bad. All right, so let's see what happens. If I get left with Lamar Miller, I'll be very happy not only to have Lamar Miller, but also because I usually take wide receiver, wide receiver, and this will be a very interesting draft if Lamar Miller's left to me. I won't be mad if this team, Team Patel, takes Lamar Miller. Okay, good. As long as it didn't time out. All right. I like Mark Ingram, but uh, damn Coon. Touchdown Vulture himself. I like Jordy Nelson a lot. Um... I know he like fucked up his other knee. I had I had ACL surgery. Come on, how bad can it be? Um, dude, I couldn't even like walk ever. Anyway, that wasn't funny. Shut up, Eric. Draft. I like Allen Robinson. I don't. I'm not a huge fan of Eric. I want to take Jordy Nelson. I like Jordy Nelson. He's the one I feel least concerned about as far as everything, which is kind of a sad thing. <laughs> yeah, so the main four guys I wanted got taken in between those two. But let's look at it differently. Because Jordy Nelson was probably the one I would have taken no matter what in that round. So am I happier with Jordy Nelson and Lamar Miller or Jordy Nelson and Rob Gronkowski? Probably Jordy Nelson and Rob Gronkowski. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, um, the guy who picked fifth is the guy who took Le'Veon Bell. And I want to watch that. I'll always watch that in these drafts because if he gets the four-game suspension that everyone's expecting, we saw um, D'Angelo Williams do extremely well last year in that spot, and I think he is a four-game, and fortunately you know what four games, um, running back one. And for people like me who don't often take running backs early, unless they get the insane value, but at least in this draft I did not, so... That's someone I'll actively be targeting. He's going around the fifth or sixth round in these 12, 12 team leagues. But uh, the person who might grab him beforehand or earlier is, you know, whoever picked fifth. So I want to watch for them to see if I need to take him in. I wouldn't take him in the fourth. But see if I. In the fifth, I have a late pick. So I need to see. So, okay. So if, come, if D'Angelo's on the board still in the fifth round, I will wait until the sixth round. Um, yeah, I'll take him in the sixth. I'll be okay taking him in the sixth. Uh, but he'll probably get snatched up in the... F I might get snatched up in the fifth. Either way, that's fine. We'll see. And there might even be better long-term running backs than him. But I really like having a guy where you can go, oh, this is definitely a top whatever at 12 in their position most likely a top 12 in their position, and I know exactly what those weeks are. Because there's guys who get drafted in the 7th and 8th round who are like, well, I know they're going to have 8 out of 16 good weeks. It's like, well, you don't know which weeks those are. And I don't like taking boomer bust players like that. I like taking long-term boomer bust where it's like they could either be awful the whole year or great the whole year. I hate taking the ones who are like good half the year, but you never know which games those are. All right, if I can get DeAndre up. Uh, um, Demarius Thomas. Yeah, if DeAndre Hopkins slips to the third, <laughs> that'll be great. If I can get Demarius Thomas on this next one, I'll be happy. Uh, unfortunately, there's two auto drafters already, which I actually I don't mind having a couple auto drafters early because it keeps it interesting. It keeps it from like uh, I'd rather have two auto drafters who are just taking based on ADP uh, than a couple of guys who just aren't very good and really skewing the draft. God damn it. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna get them. Unless, yeah. Oh, yeah, so for these drafts, keeping in mind, like, court, quarterback and tight end, figuring out when you're going to get value. Fortunately, I don't have to check out the tight ends because <laughs> Gronk is just right there, and it's, uh, am I going to get him? Nope, of course I'm not going to get him. Uh, Keenan Allen's gone, damn it. This is going to be a very interesting draft. I had another wide receiver up there instead of uh, Jordan Nell, or instead of Rob Gronk. No, the more I look at this, the more I like it. Right, let's see who we got. So Aaron Rodgers is coming up. This is a four-point per touchdown league against Russell Wilson's there, too. 
People keep finding, from what I can tell, people keep finding Drew Brees as, like, the value quarterback. And I'm looking at round three. I'm not going to take a quarterback in round three. But there's one. If one of them is there in round four, that might be good. I'm not taking Stewart or Hyde. C.J. Anderson, I know there's a lot of hype around him. Julian Edelman's a big question mark. See, I love uh, this quarterback stuff is great, but the problem is Tom Brady's floating around going super late. All right. Ugh. This is gross. All right. I like Hyde, though. Yeah, Hyde. I don't... I've never... I've actually have not taken Carlos Hyde in a draft. Uh, and if his body holds up, I'm very happy with that pick, but big question mark. I might have wanted to take C.G. Anderson there. I guess maybe C.G. Anderson was the one to take there. Eh, yeah, probably. Well, you know what? Pretend I switched to C.G. Anderson, or whatever you feel. The point is... I took a running back there because I felt the running backs that were around there were definitely be and <laughs> better than the wide receivers. Uh, but it's also important to note that Jonathan Stewart was someone I skipped right over. I don't know. That's uh, a little risky. Now I'm so mad I didn't take C.J. Anderson. God, that's a tough pick. This is good. Getting put in a situation. Every single round I've been put in a situation where I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> All right, what do we got for round four? Same shit. Probably gonna go dip down. So look at this. It's round four. Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, are right there. They're not coming back to me. Uh, so we're looking at another one, two, three, four, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen picks. I'm counting. Sorry. Um, there's going to be, I'm going to enjoy my next two picks. I very much believe I'm going to enjoy the next two picks. So, because I think I'm going to get a wide receiver and a quarterback I really like there, I will take Aaron Rodgers. It can hurt to take that when you know someone else is just going to get insane value on Russell Wilson. Um, or if you believe Russell Wilson's the better quarterback, then you take Russell Wilson there. But I think position scarcity base... Uh, that's the way to go, because I'm looking down and I see wide receivers and running backs over the next 18 picks, which most of which will probably be taken in the next 18 picks. And I honestly like the following 18 picks, <laughs> people in that round, or in that list of, of guys who I'd be happy taking, just as happy as, as those top ones. So I might as well take a quarter of somebody from a position who's not coming back to me than, than a position where I'm fine. God, the quarterback goes so deep this year. But again, these are all things I'm not comfortable doing, positions I'm uncomfortable in. I think this is just based on how this draft is going. And I'm not sure what else I could have done better. <laughs> uh, just from this outset of the draft, I think... I think this is one of those teams, and I had one of these last year. I mean, injuries made this also happen, but I had a team last year where I went one and three to start out with. I ended up winning that league, which was cool. But like, I started one and three because I was drafting and things like this kept happening, and I kept there. I didn't have any of the home run picks I was really banking on, and I kind of drafted like a team that was maybe sixth or seventh best team, just teetering on complete middle of the road, and. I would have liked to have started out two and two, but I started out one and three, and I was able to build up on the waiver wire. And eventually, my bench depth really, like, you know, caught up with all that, which was nice. I don't know. Let's see how far down. Yeah, so I'm hoping when it comes back, I can have people like Arian Foster, even Matt Jones, who I'm not thrilled with, uh, Danny Woodhead, because it is PPR, D'Angelo Williams, um, Frank Gore. Because, see, I love... And Tom Brady's right there. But I already took Aaron Rodgers. See, it's the Tom Brady thing where it's just like... If I didn't take Aaron Rodgers, who else am I taking? I mean, I don't... No one who's gone since Aaron Rodgers really excites me or is any more exciting than what the two next players I'll likely get. I guess I could fill out a flex position and then grab Tom Brady and somebody else. Yeah, I guess so. 
I guess I could make my team marginally better by taking Tom Brady. But then again, taking players who are going to come in later in the year, like Le'Veon Bell or Tom Brady, I'm already taking a bunch of questionable players. If Carlos, Carlos Hyde flops or Jordy Nelson isn't the same as he was. We haven't played a single preseason game, so well, I know um, that could be a huge mistake where I really like run the risk of going 0-4 or 1-3, and, and maybe the waiver wire doesn't work as well in those first couple weeks for me uh, as it did for the team I referenced before. There goes D'Angelo Williams. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. There you go. No, the team who picked fourth took him. Took Le'Veon Bell, not fifth. So D'Angelo Williams and the Le'Veon Bell owner got sniped for D'Angelo Williams one pick ahead of time. Whatever, I wasn't going to take him. I'm only going to take him over Aaron Rodgers or any of those other guys. But I would have liked to have him for this particular. Anyway, it's probably why it's better not to have Tom Brady because I need to give myself a chance to go on 50-50 or higher in the first handful of games to just in case some things fall through and I need to use the waiver wire to build back up. If I can grab Marion Foster, I'll be very happy. So please, person before me who took the guy I wanted the last time or two times ago, please leave me with my beautiful, beautiful Arian Foster. You can also kind of view him based on his injury history. He's apparently looking great right now, but with his injury history, you can Often assume that he's like D'Angelo Williams. <laughs> he might explode after a couple of games. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. I like a lot of these players. I like Malcolm Floyd. But I also like John Brown. Did John Brown go already? There's John Brown. All right, you know what? Because Michael Floyd and John Brown are still there, I'm only going to wait to take one. I like Arian Foster. I believe in Arian Foster. Yeah, I believe in Aaron Foster. Here we go. Wow, talk about team questionable. <laughs> team injury prone. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, this is what I said about Boomer Bust stuff. None of these guys are going to be good sometimes and bad others. They're going to perform if they're if they're healthy. There goes Murray and Woodhead and the round of or whatever train of mid-round running backs. Michael Floyd still isn't off the board at all. I think at this point, see, it's Drew Brees and, and Ben Roethlisberger. Granted, I think Drew Brees is miles ahead. There goes Drew Brees. All right. What round is this? Six? Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I still think I, wow, this is a, I think this is one where I got great value on both tight end and quarterback. And the value for, like, tight end, I still took him in the, the end of the first, which isn't necessarily value for ADP, but it's definitely value for who was left on the board. And if one of those four guys had slipped and I took them instead of Jordan Nelson, like a Lamar Miller or, or whoever, that would have been insane. Okay, there goes Ben Roethlisberger. At least somebody else is taking not great picks for efficiency. Uh, John Brown or Michael Floyd? Oh my god. I have people are banking on Michael or John Brown. <laughs> I don't think it really makes a difference. I'm flipping a coin here. I gotta say, I like John Brown. Son of a bitch, I like John Brown. And I like both of them, but I like John Brown a little bit more. He makes a lot of good plays, right? I feel a shit about that. I watched a lot of Cardinals games last year for various reasons. Usually it's because I was playing against teams that had Cardinals players on them. It's like, son of a bitch. My most um, bragging rights-based league, uh, I... I, I had the high score of any team, which we do pay out for uh, seven of the 14 weeks for a uh, season. And then um, lost in the first round of the playoffs by half a point when my opponent had uh, 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 David Johnson, <laughs> who in our format with bonuses and whatnot and PPR scored like 45 points. <laughs> I hated him. I hated his guts. And then I watched All or Nothing on Amazon. I was like, hey, I love that guy. <laughs> You go, David Johnson. You go. 
All right, who's got pick? There goes Tom Brady. Okay, I probably wouldn't have taken eh, Tom Brady and Mutt. The end of the sixth. And I got Aaron Rodgers in the... One, two, three. In the fourth. End of the fourth. I guess it doesn't really... I mean, just I'm not competing with the teams as far as... That's the point of this, but as far as this particular draft, I'm comparing with myself. So what could I have done? Where could those players have gone? But I think with the way that this turned out, it's so funny because like the last draft I did, I think I did a poor job of drafting, but the team was way better because things just fell in my lap. Um, this, I feel like I did a good job with what I worked with, the rationales and everything. Especially because I hate taking quarterbacks and tight ends anywhere before, like, super late. And the fact that I still, I'm six picks in, I still haven't gotten a flex spot filled. Oh, I'm usually this is by three. I'm so used to going wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. Oh, my God, my head. Just crammed salt in for, oh. oh. Sorry for not as fun. Miserable. Ugh. Fantasy football. So this is like my literal existential crisis I have every time, uh, like every Sunday. It's like I'm watching and I get excited and I get depressed and excited and depressed with every play that goes down, watching the scores, watching the games. And like at some point, right in the middle, usually when I'm really happy, I remind myself how little any of this matters. <laughs> and I think about the vast extent expanse of existence and what matters, what doesn't matter and what is it really, why am I feeling all this joy of something, ooh it's my pick again uh, so anyway <laughs> uh, fuck you Josh Gordon, get it off my face yeah so here's a point, if I'd been taking, you know if I hadn't taken a quarterback where I'd just be like, I'm okay, sweet we're a Phil Rivers, awesome but instead I have to take kind of a weak ass pick on a flex position, you know what? I'm willing to take Allen Hurts. Everyone's fine. I like Kevin White, but question mark. Allen Hurts it is. I know there's regression, but I feel like normally I have to shuffle my running back two spot a lot. So there's always a spot I tend to be shuffling. But I like when it's a PPR league to have that be wide receivers and a flex, or a wide receiver on the flex just solidified. Then shuffle the running back a bunch, especially with all the pass catching running backs. But uh, if I have to just shuffle around a flex position and hope that and take like three or four guys, and hope that one of them pans out, fine. I've got advantages potentially probably on the quarterback position and definitely on the tight end position, um, and having Aaron Rodgers and Jordy Nelson just the stack of a, of a wide receiver and his favorite or a quarterback and his favorite receiver. Um, you know, causes issues with my floor, but definitely raises the ceiling. Um, I'm going to take him. Oh, Colby Fleener. Oh, well, I'm not looking for... Wow, that's great value for whoever got Colby Fleener. Son of a bitch. Um. Oh, no, I don't give a shit. <laughs> uh, who's someone? Sterling Shepard, I keep hearing all those good things about Mr. Sterling Shepard. I know, I know, I know. I'll take Charles Sims. Great. I back up who gets the passing downs, and uh, and apparently he's shown, if I recall correctly, that he can step up if Doug Martin's out. Travis Benjamin and Michael Thomas. If they both make it back to me, I'll be pretty happy. Oh my god, my stupid head. What happened? I need sleep. I still have 12 crabs left. Uh, 10, maybe? I don't need them. <laughs> I don't want to get them so bad. All I want to eat crabs. Oh, I have a daughter. I can't let her hear me crying like this. I should probably leave her room. No. No, no. Be strong. Good God. I thought it would take all 12 of these videos before I started incoherently rambling to myself, but just two. 
just I hate most of these players a lot, which is why I like to take quarterbacks now. <laughs> Give me Travis Benjamin and Michael Thomas. Give me Travis Benjamin and Michael Thomas. Give me Travis Beichelman Bi and Michael Travis. Come on. This is actually why I don't mind auto-drafting later. More people are auto-drafting than right to it. I like Julius Thomas and Antonio Gates' late round tight ends. Good call. Picks 99-100. Come on, Dad. Eric, you can't go to the bathroom even though you want to because it'll be dead air. So I just leave dead air for some reason. Oh, Blah Pal. I like Blah Pal. That's interesting, especially with my forte and the split carries. But no, we're talking guys who can either be good or be terrible, not guys who will be okay or good somewhere. Got Michael Thomas. If I can just get Travis Benjamin, I'll be pretty happy. I like Dorset too. And I don't know if I care about anybody after that. I hope I'm not falling into a trap with this Aaron Rodgers thing. But, I mean, people have devalued quarterbacks big time this year. And guys who were going in the first or second were now going in the fourth. I think that makes sense. But there's so many. There's like, oh, god damn. This is also the point in the pre year in the dr mock draft in the preseason. I start feeling like, oh, why am I? Or not why am I? Um, it's all about me. <laughs> why? Like, there's all these quarterbacks people like these top-tier quarterbacks, and so I'm just like... And not just quarterbacks, every position, where I'm just like, is it what I believe, or is it what I'm being told to believe? So I'm just hoping it's my case. I don't know. Whatever. All right, Travis Benjamin's still there. I'm taking him. Right, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I don't give a shit. Have fun. Watch. Watch practice. All right, not even my turn. Why do I always check behind the shower curtain? There's a murderer there. I guess this is my guest room and a room I never go in. But why would they be here for all this time? Like I could never stalk somebody and hide in the house and wait to murder them. Cause like I'd get so, that's so stupid. I'm not trying to make a joke. I'm just dead serious. I would get so bored. Like I got bored peeing. There for less than 20 seconds. Oh, this is so I wish I had my phone. All right, what else is happening? All right, who got token? Bunch of people who I don't care about. Somebody replay this when all of them break out. Oh man. 
Took you that long to take them punches. Alright, who else we got? Do I want to be an asshole and take like a top defense and kicker? No, because that would be stupid. We have the most like top heavy team. People do not respect a good bench. Best teams I've had are usually ones that have a great bench. Regardless of how unsexy the starting lineup is. Which I think that song by TLC, Unsexy, I think that was about this exact situation. Ooh, Devontae Adams. DeAndre Washington might be a guy I'd like. God damn. Do I for real just take Ghost right here? Yeah, I guess I will. I like having him. <laughs> That's stupid. What round was that? I don't know. I didn't see anybody near him that I wanted. <laughs> And yeah, the other one. Then Kevin Doxon or Josh Doxon just blow those up. I'm a Ravens fan, but I don't think Mike Wallace is really gonna be fantasy relevant. But I don't know if you do. This is the place to take him. But if you like a kicker or defense, and you're just you know, fuck it, I don't like anybody else. <laughs> that's all I'll take. I might take Ron Lindell Smallwood, right? I forget what the situation is over there. Wants to take a JJ Wattless Texans defense. Sound good? I guess I'll take Randall Smallwood. It's Donald Sproles. He's not going to get the bulk of the carries. If uh, Who's running for them right now? God damn it, I'm bleeding. Son of a bitch. I'm trying to take one teeny tile man. Teeny tile. Teeny tiny nail off. Bleed everywhere. There's a football analogy in there somewhere, but I don't know it. I'm kind of a pussy, so probably shouldn't make it anyway. <laughs> <coughs> Moments away from sucking my thumb. The baby that I am. Alright, what are we doing? Wendell Smallwood. Surprised when he joined the NFL, he didn't change his name to Wendell Big Johnson. But you know what? I'm not his PR agent, manager, whatever you call it. Does he just like that really hurt? Son of a bitch. Uh, it definitely just take whatever assholes you like. I'm dead serious. There's like a million guys you could take. <laughs> There's no. It's not a rhyme or reason as far as who I'm taking. I don't think. I mean, I'm just, of why I'm taking one guy over others. Which are low percentage flyers. Hopefully, we'll get lucky. Uh, the one thing I will say, though, I do not, I would advocate against taking at this point, like, well, there's still some decent quarterbacks and tight ends on the board. Why don't I take a backup despite having potentially the best of each? The reason you don't do that is because see all these serviceable tight ends and quarterbacks that are on the on the uh, undrafted they will remain undrafted do not waste your picks on them you these rookies or these like potential wide receiver twos that might break out 
those are guys who will get drafted. Victor Cruz just got drafted. Um, and in the case that you have a league that drafts a lot of uh, backup quarterbacks and backup tight ends, it doesn't matter, even if they get drafted. As the weeks go on, many of them will wind up back on the waiver wire as teams realize that as things happen to other teams and they need to drop these extra positions they're not using. And don't get suckered in by the trade bait either. Just wait for them to drop. Wait for them to drop. Anybody trying to make a trade? That's probably why I like to wheel and deal. That's just fun. Um, but like, I always had trouble with it. Like, it once comes at me, like, why are you trying to fuck me? No, I'm trying to give you a good. I'm trying to rip myself off a little bit because I just want to make this deal happen because it's fun. <laughs> it's my one like newbie-ish quality. Everything else, I'm strict strategy. But like when it's trading, I'm just like, let's fucking do it. Um, but with that, like, I think the reason it's, like, really looks shady is because it's, like, why are you trying to make the trade? And a lot of times when I think back, I was like, oh, shit, I was accidentally being shady because I probably would have dropped one of the players I was trying to trade <laughs> just trying to get something for him before I just went back to the waiver wire. Just don't fall for that shit. All right, so what do I still need? The defense and uh, whoever else? At this point, I'm just staying in so I don't, like, look like an asshole leaving. You've all probably left anyway. Uh, go to ericthrystewart.com, YouTube, Eric Tries Too Hard for other podcasts. How about Agalor? If, uh, once his name goes down. Who else we got? And so well, I'll take my homers. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. That's the end of this thingy. Peace. Oh, whoops. How do I turn this thing off? There we go. Draft pick ten. Oops. Pick ten and peace.